Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given your church the great joy of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Give us also the greater joy of the kingdom of your elect, when the flock of your Son will share in the final victory of its shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the epistle to the Ephesians. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its com commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new hum humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 85, verses 7 through 13. Psalm 85, verses 7 through 13, to the end, on page 709. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You have heard it, you have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? But be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I love it whenever we come across this phrase in Psalm 85, mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. It's such a beautiful image. It's not one of the sentences from the Psalms that I consider to be an encapsulation of the gospel per se, um, but it certainly encapsulates um, part of the essence of God uh, when we hear that mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Today is an unusual day in that, uh, in, in, at least in the Episcopal Church's calendar, because for most of the church, the church has been instructed to celebrate the Feast of St. Mark the Evangelist today. Unless, of course, it happened to be your patronal feast, in which case you could celebrate it as we did yesterday. If it's not your patronal feast, yesterday, having been the fourth Sunday of Easter, would have had precedence as any Sunday would have over even, a principal, even over most principal feasts. Uh, and so you keep the Sunday and then St. Mark's Day gets moved to today. All this is unimportant except to say that when I arrived in the sacristy to look and see what the readings for today were, I was instructed that they were the readings of St. Mark's, which St. Mark's Day, which we already kept yesterday. Now, you may not realize that the church does not generally provide, at least not in the prayer book, does not generally provide readings for every single day of the year. For that, you need to go to a specific calendar that's published every year and by somebody, I don't know, who sits in a room with a dartboard and comes up with readings for the year, as far as I know. But um, it's, I actually know that they don't do it that way. But anyway, I'll leave you with that thought to keep you busy if you're not interested in the rest of the homily. Um, so today, the lessons assigned for today were only the possibility of keeping the Feast of St. Mark. And there's no alternative set of readings today. There are, none, there are no weekly, daily lectionary Eucharistic readings in the prayer book. So what is one to do? Well, one could turn to the Missal, except that the Missal doesn't always provide readings for the day either. What the Missal does provide at the end of the Anglican Missal are all kinds of votive masses. And you can think to yourself, now, what votive mass, having an open day with no other readings assigned, what cause do I want to promote in the name of the gospel? I did not think to myself, oh, how can I get verse, is it 13? Uh, no, sorry, verse 10. How can I get verse 10 of Psalm 85 into the lectionary today? Although that would have been another good way of coming to this conclusion. I thought to myself, what cause shall I promote during this day in Eastertide? What cause shall I ask God to promote in God's own, with God's own power and might? What cause shall we plead before the altar of God? And I will confess to you that my default answer to this question when there's no other cause to promote is the cause of peace. As it happens, the prayer book does provide lections for a mass, essentially a votive mass, as the Missal does as well, just for peace. Which are the readings that I read to you today? Pleading the cause of peace before God's throne, before God's altar, and among God's people. And I'm convinced that it's one of the most important vocations of the church today to plead the cause of peace in this warring, fractious world of ours. To pray that mercy and truth may meet together, that righteousness and peace will indeed kiss each other. So that the causes of mercy and truth, righteousness and peace above all may be established in the world among God's people. Jesus said, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Peace is my last gift to you. And so the cause of peace is near to Christ's heart and part of Christ's inheritance to us, his people. When we can think of nothing else to pray for, we can always pray for peace. When we can 
account for no other cause that might animate us, we can always align ourselves with the cause of peace. And if the church were to stop praying for everything else, she could at least pray for peace every single day of the year. It surprises people, I think, to consider the possibility that Christ came into the world to bring peace, but the biblical witness is strong on this. Despite Jesus' own sometimes contradictory teaching, the biblical witness is much stronger in the case for peace than it is in the case for division. And now that Christ sits at the right hand of God, I'm certain that the power and might that belong to him, he intends to use for the cause of peace rather than for the cause of division. And so on today, left to our own devices to decide what we might pray for, what cause we might promote, I hope I was not misguided in choosing the cause of peace and in inviting the church to pray once again that mercy and truth might be met together, that righteousness and peace might kiss each other, and that we might enjoy the blessings of peace by Christ's mercy. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray for the church and for the world using form six of the prayers of the people found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Daniel, our bishop, for Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters who worship and work in this place and parish, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially all those who are sick with the coronavirus, all doctors, nurses, medical workers, and other essential workers who put themselves at risk for the care of others, all those who are unemployed or otherwise in financial straits, and are worried about their livelihoods, their careers, their families, and their own well-being. All those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are struggling for justice that's been denied, and working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society. And all those beloved of this parish community who are sick or in need, especially remembering to pray for Chris, George, Sue, Kent John, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Jean, Marguerite, Kathleen, Lori, Elizabeth, Mark, Ira, Julia, Will, Judith, Lucas, Harry, Colleen, Jacob, Chris, Nick, Arthur, Mark, and all those others who we remember in the silence of our hearts. Continuing also to pray for peace in our time, for an end to warfare throughout the world, and all that disturbs and disrupts the peace of our hearts, our lives, and our communities, and our church. Continuing also to pray for all those who suffer in the aftermath of war and violence and in the presence of it, especially refugees who are in search of a home. Continuing to pray for all those who are living in great poverty in too many places around the world, and especially our own neighbors living in poverty in this city. For those who are homeless, hungry, lost, frightened, alone, for those who are in prison, for those who have been struggling with addictions, 
or suffering with mental illness, for those who've been exploited or abused, and for all those who suffer in any way in body, mind, or estate. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, giving thanks especially for the beauty of this day, giving thanks for the life of this parish community, and especially for all the gifts we've been given to continue this life of ministry throughout the pandemic and to extend the life of ministry in this place in several ways. Giving thanks for all those who offer their gifts for ministry in this place and parish with willing hands and glad hearts. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, remembering especially all those who've died from the coronavirus in the past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence in recent days. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We who put their trust in you. We pray to you also, for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Mark, the Evangelist, and with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of an everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. 
Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.